What's up, Call of Duty fans? Welcome back. We've got ourselves a day one recap with the day two setup and, of course, some predictions and potential bet looks for you guys. Before we go too far, though, it happens to be my birthday. Just going to be spending it with you guys as we get ready to go for the games. And then, of course, I'll be in the chat for most of the night tonight before I go out to dinner to celebrate. And, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll just throw it out there and give this uh, a little bit of a love to you guys, a little bit of a giveaway for you. The first person in the comments below to guess my proper age will be gifted. Wait for it. One free subscription to this channel. I am so courteous. I know it. I know it. I know that you guys have just, you you just flaunt, say shift, you give too much. But I will be giving away one free subscription to this channel if you get my age right. But I am curious to see who's going to guess that right. So if you do want to get into the comments below and take a guess, uh, I'm not going to give you any hints. This is going to be fun for me to watch. Let's go ahead and dig into the games. That's what we're all here for. We don't care about my birthday. It's stupid. We're here for May 20th. What happened on our first day of games on Monday? Midnight Evil Geniuses, Luminosity versus Reciprocity. Only two sets of games, and we'll start things off with Midnight and Evil Geniuses. Remember, Midnight had themselves a pretty solid week last week. They went 2-1 and one with a 3-2 win versus UYU and the 3-0 versus LG before they would fall 0-3 to Genji to start their week. Evil Geniuses, though, would pop up with a brilliant 3-0 and week. With two three and ones and a three zero versus Gen G, very surprising. So this would be a very good test to see which of these teams actually is for real. And Evil Geniuses would come out and they would be down a little bit here. And we started things off on Hacienda for the first hard point. Midnight looked pretty calm and collected throughout most of it. A couple streaks did not go their way, unfortunately. And Evil Geniuses would put together a nice little comeback and find themselves the first map before we go to the search and destroy that was played on frequency. And, well, Midnight has been very good in the Search and Destroy lately in the last couple of weeks. Evil Geniuses has not been bad by any stretch. But for Midnight, they were just better today. They would go all the way to round 11. A lot of back and forth. And then from there, Attach would continue to have an incredible day where he would actually pop the F off on control. And the following hard point, Evil Geniuses would have no problem on the control. A 3-0 on Arsenal. Midnight wanted to do the same Lacefield uh, NVIR scope strategy but evil geniuses was keen to it had themselves prepared for it and it is important to note that evil geniuses has really only been dominatingly successful on arsenal the other maps have not been nearly as good looking for them um, at least as we've seen them so far but for evil geniuses they were able to find the 3-0 there and then we would go to the last hard point that was played on seaside a back and forth affair midnight had a chance to break the final hill which of course was the fountain hill parasite was able to earn himself streaks late but attach and the rest of the gang just too strong today for midnight they they would outlast them a 3-1 set but it was a very good set outside of the control if you missed this one go back and watch it because nobody really played poorly today attached just played better than everybody else so it was a very very fun set to watch i highly recommend going back and re-watching that one and then going over to luminosity versus reciprocity and again question marks here because tommy is officially out and if you missed the reason why he's dealing with some mental health struggles i do have a video on it if you've missed it so far but dens would be subbing in and there were a lot of questions on my end would dens be running the Maddox, which is what he really had been playing majority of the time during the POQ and all that. Or would we see him possibly just running the ICR, which would allow Wuskin and Shawnee to run the, the Maddoxes, and it would be the latter of the two. Dens would come out on the ICR and have himself that face-up gunfights, where he actually held on pretty nicely, considering how good formal usually is with the ICR. But Luminosity, a lot of drama. Apparently, apparently, Gunless did not show up until just before the match started. LG was running scrims with Ricky, and uh, Gunless showed up late to call time, I guess, for the perform for their match today. So big looks there um, as Luminosity continues to struggle with a lot of different things, not just gameplay, but apparently commitment. And uh, it kind of seems like they've chalked up the rest of this until the next roster mania period. Looks like everyone's pretty much tired of each other. Reciprocity off of some of that negative clout surrounding Luminosity would be able to take this set pretty convincingly, I'd say, 250 to 132, a 6-3 search. They would lose the control, but that's not super surprising because LG is still a decent control team. And with these swap-ups that we just saw with Dens in the mix, Reciprocity has been pretty bad in control throughout the entirety of the season unless they play on Arsenal. Literally, they have six of their ten wins of control on Arsenal. The other one's coming on Gridlock and one on Seaside, but... Today it was frequency where they have been not been very successful. 0-2 in total on the map now with that 1-3 loss. And then they were able to come back out on the hard point, the second one, and absolutely trounced. That was played on Arsenal. A very easy going. There was a really funny moment, actually, where... John and Classic looked awful today, flat out. Just, again, they did not look good whatsoever. But the both of them were finishing up a rotation kill 
on the jet hard point. This is near the end of the game. And in frustration, Classic actually punches John in the back before they rotate. So just some more good comic moments here for LG as we dig into what we'll be looking at tomorrow. We'll be seeing Midnight, Reciprocity, Evil Geniuses, Optic, Luminosity versus UYU, FaZe Clan versus Gen G to finish everything off. A very stacked day with a lot of evenly matched teams, and well, that's for good and for bad, I would say, uh, generally speaking. We'll start things off and talk about this Reciprocity and Midnight game. For Midnight, again, they looked better today. I think they looked really, really good, and they very well could put up a solid fight versus Reciprocity. My biggest question mark simply comes down to, will Blast be able to play consistently? Will Llama God play as well as he did today against Reciprocity? Because he definitely looked better today. Lacefield also had a lot more success up against Evil Genius than we've seen previously and Parasite is continuing to be very solid in the AR line but Reciprocity I would say generally speaking up front looked better today that's my biggest thing about this squad as they go forward is what will you which team will you get out of Midnight I think you know what you're going to get out of Reciprocity it's not going to be great it's not going to be bad but for Midnight you have to kind of wonder sometimes they don't show up and things don't look very good for them other days they show up and blow people out of the water but you worry that this Midnight team will come out and find themselves up 2-0 and then automatically start throwing the next two rounds. The biggest thing is this Reciprocity team is very one-dimensional when it comes to control specifically. You need to ban away Arsenal from them, otherwise they will find some success against you. Um, it's going to be an interesting match, to say the least. I'm very excited to see that one. It should be very evenly paced. Evil Geniuses in Optic will be up next. And this is a very big test, I would say, for Evil Geniuses. Optic has been incredible. They've been sitting this last week uh, of the first week of divisional play. They've only lost two hard points, and one of them was by three points. So they could possibly have gone a total of seven and one in their hard points, but that would not be the case. They would go six and two instead. But Evil Geniuses, a flawless seven and zero oh in the hard points, should be very interesting to see. The biggest thing about this set is the fact that Optic has been definitively the, the better search and destroy team. But on the flip, Evil Geniuses has had a big startup when it comes to their control. Optic has not looked very good in their control. And, uh, well, that's going to be the biggest question mark. I think if you're Optic, again, Evil Geniuses is very one-dimensional. They only do well on Arsenal from what we've seen so far. would love to see them push them to somewhere else to make them kind of flex and see if that coordination is, in fact, there across multiple maps. Going into our third match, this is going to be so hard to predict, and I have no idea how we're going to do that when we get to the betting breakdown. But LG and UYU... LG look completely out of it, flat out. They don't. They didn't practice at all this last weekend. Gunless shows up late. Classic and John don't even break double digits uh, in the final hard point and kills. They, they barely do. They find maybe 10 kills. Uh, that's not good. Something is very much so going awry here outside of their control where they look decent. UYU, on the other hand, I don't think that they're nearly as negative as far as their team mentality, but... There isn't very many positives to spin this team off of at the moment. Zaptius has looked pretty solid. He's definitely a pro league contender. I wouldn't call him an all-star flex by any stretch of the imagination, but he has played well and has been competing. Parzelian continues to be an upstarter, and then when Methods and Mayhem play well, it allows Royalty to be a little bit better than he normally is, which is usually less than stellar. Going to be a very tough one to predict, honestly. And then we'll finish off the day with a very big ball burner. We've got ourselves FaZe and Gen G. This is actually a battle of the hard points, I think, generally speaking. Search and Destroy has looked okay for both teams, maybe better for FaZe, but they've also played lower caliber opponents than Gen G have. But then the control as well, FaZe has looked very good in their control so far. They went 4-0 last week in control. You mimic that up with a 3-2 performance at London. This team is very scary when it comes to the control. Let's go ahead and get into our predictions very quickly and all of our betting breakdowns. Again, if you are out there looking to bet on Bovada or Skybet or Bet365, please make sure you're betting responsibly. You're not trying to make lifestyle choices off of these bets. This is just predictions as well. Do not use my word as law, although I will say I almost guessed the entire day on Monday perfectly. So there's that to consider. Let's go Go ahead and take a look though at midnight first they're minus 125 to win the match in american odds again you can switch back and forth between your odds up top on any of those websites and then they have the plus 1.5 again they have to get at least two rounds or more and that's going at the minus 225 line you look at their last 10 and then compare that to that of reciprocity is a very even match here it can be hard to predict but reciprocity is going at the minus 110 and then you've also got the 1.5 spread where they have to go 3-1 or 3-0 at plus 170. I personally would not recommend taking any bets on this game. These lines are not favorable whatsoever to bet on. I do have the upset potential for Midnight, but 
I do not see them winning this set. I have this one going 3-2 for Reciprocity. Uh, your best bet here, I guess, would be to find the 1.5 plus for Midnight. But again, at minus 225, it's just not worth it. Um, I would stay away from this one personally. I do not see Reciprocity getting themselves a 3-1 or a 3-0. So that plus 170, as tempting as it is, is kind of a debate. We'll go down a little bit further here as we take a look at Evil Geniuses and Optic, that matchup. Evil Geniuses are the underdogs here pretty considerably, actually, at plus 275. The spread of their plus 1.5 is actually pretty favorable at plus 115 for them to get at least two maps, if not more. And then you see their last 10 rounds, the 7-3 and three in hardpoint, very impressive. But you take a look at Optic Gaming, they are the heavy favorites at minus 385. For them to get a 3-1 or a 3-0 is actually going at minus 150. That is not hundred. That's not worth it whatsoever. You take a look at their last 10, again, a very even line between these teams. The search heavily in favor of Optic. The control should be pretty back and forth. And you take a look at the hardpoint, also very close. I actually have this one going 3-2 based on the predicted maps that I have, favoring that of Optic. So I would say there is upset potential here for Evil Geniuses if you want to throw a couple of dollars at the plus 275 it would pay out pretty nicely but i think the safest bet here is to go with the spread bet i will be betting that spread of the plus 1.5 going in favor of evil geniuses to find again like i mentioned at least two maps going over to group two though of our games uh, as we dig in we will be taking a look at luminosity and uyu luminosity again they are the favorites here at minus 195 heavy favorites considering they've not played well is kind of a monka s uh, as i was looking at this one before i was making this video uh they're also at the plus 135 to 31 or 30 this set you take a look at their last 10 compare that to uyu the plus 150 for uyu i think is actually a pretty favorable line and then you have them at least covering two maps that would be minus 175 you take a look at their last 10 now do not let the two and eight of their search and destroy fool you because this uyu team three of those losses were in round 11 at London so they very well could be sitting at five and five this should be a very even match though for me it just comes down to will Zaptius and royalty have a better day against John struggling and classic struggling and all the animosity I have this one going to five it's hard to fully predict this one but I think there is definitely upset potential here for UYU as well as the spread bet even though it's at minus 175 not the worst bet line ever I've got this one going three two for UYU and then to finish off the day FaZe Clan going up against Gen G well, this one's going to be interesting because FaZe Clan are the underdogs, plus 130 for them, and to cover the spread, it's minus 175. Not the greatest line there. I was kind of hoping they would have slightly better chances than that. And then for the mode win-loss, you see them from the last 10. Gen G, they are the favorites at minus 175. Only plus 135 for them to cover a 3-1 or a 3-0 map total. I've got this one personally going 3-2, favoring Gen G. High upset potential, though, for FaZe Clan. I would not be surprised to see them pull something out here if you want to bet their match winner. But it's only at plus 130, which is not the greatest line ever. I was hoping for higher, but that's what we got. So I've got this one going 5 and finally tilting in favor of Gen G. Um, this is, I think this one's either going to be a 3-1 or a 3-2. I think if Gen G comes out hot on hardpoint and can win the control, they might lose the search, but I think they win all the respawns if they do come out swinging. It just comes down to will they? That's the biggest question, and will FaZe be equal to the task? Again, all of those are just betting predictions. Do not use my word as law. Do what you feel is right, but as far as some advice, I, those are the lines that I'm looking at as far as potential favorites that, that are decent bet options for you, unless you want to bet on everything, which I, again, do not recommend. Well, happy birthday to me. It's been fun being with you guys. I'll catch you guys next time for the recap of day number two, setting things up for bets and predictions for day three as well. Until then, though, hope you keep all holding it down. Later, later. Bye-bye.